see you today, man. I'm glad you had just a couple minutes to come in the studio, talk about some things. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, back to the whole retirement bridge building construction project around the property <laughs> kind of thing. A lot of change, but it sort of figures in somewhat to today's topic. I'll uh, allude to that later. It's uh, interesting. Well, I um, I think it is kind of interesting, and I'm glad you had the time to come in. I've um, was listening to, you know, I, 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 we talked about this before, but I listen to a lot of podcasts. Right. I scan and listen all the time, trying to pick up things. And there's a couple I have subscribed to, and Joe Rogan's one of the biggest ones, you know, six million people uh, subscribed in there. So he had Cornell West on uh, last yeah. night, yesterday, yeah. and um, said some real interesting things. And I, I, what caught me was at the very beginning of how well Dr. West was able to um, – really kind of uh, take from so many different sources right. to pull together to make a statement about society and how comedy was working and um, just the impact of comedy throughout history, but all the way up until now and what's going on. So, um, Well, he sure brought in a lot of disparate influences. I mean, he was talking about uh, uh, reading, I think, uh, Aristophanes, and in the same breath, uh, we're listening to Curtis Mayfield while we're reading some Chekhov also. I, I, I don't remember all the allusions, but it, I just right. it, I, I really like that kind of uh, – a flexible mind that can look at draw from all these different sources and a lot of folks see them as maybe maybe so different so almost antithetical and and yet he finds the commonality in these things and pulls them into new new direction really that that's that's exactly what i was thinking too and uh just the the breadth and depth of his knowledge in order to pull together these statements i thought was uh, fairly amazing um yeah well harvard princeton yeah he's yeah. Uh, well, he's a top top scholar yeah that, that's yeah, kind of uh, where where he is and the um the the interesting notion that um and i think goes with some of the books he's written is this idea that he has he puts it in a language where people can understand the sort of the common man can understand and not necessarily be something like uh, you know the intellectual pursuit and the academic pursuit so much as it is kind of communicating with people you know across I, these boundaries i really like that i, I know when i uh when I was an undergrad, I had a, a professor tell me one time that, uh, well, you really, you're a bright guy and you you have a lot of good ideas, but why do you talk, uh, affect this southern country boy kind of thing? He was right. talking about me, and, and at that time, that just sort of hurt my feelings, and I, I thought, I know, you know. and I'm so sorry. It's, I, they've never accused me of that. Uh, oh, yeah, they have, I guess. Forgot about that. <laughs> So so anyway the the whole the whole idea is you are who you are and you bring all these things to the table and it's it's good and I I think uh you know now we live in more of a mashup culture where you bring in all different kinds of music and put them all together or all kinds of ideas and it also goes toward that concept we talk about I think on our last podcast mm -hmm. where where the whole idea of innovation is to is to orient that is look at everything you have and uh, are there new ways of using it so I think uh, uh, some of what uh, Dr. West was talking about certainly had that kind of feel to it he it was certainly fun to listen to him and uh, Joe Rogan too I mean as they kind of riffed off each other and uh, bounced ideas back and forth. Yeah, I, to me, the, the some of the ideas he talked about how comedy was moved moved through our society and our culture over many many years, um, and the 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 notion that it is a way of communicating and sometimes it's a way of dealing with our grief and our sorrows and our troubles in a way that is honest and uh, straightforward so that people can understand it and and the general. You know, the common man sort of can understand that. And it comes from that, that yeah. side of things as opposed to the aristocracy. Yeah, well, uh, and controversy, too, and controversial uh, issues that people really don't want to get at in an open confrontational kind of uh, kind of motif. So in other words, you can, you can say it in humor. So you, you, you know, the old thing, Hey, Hey, uh, uh, that's an ugly shirt. No, Hey, just kidding. Or am I, you know, right, that kind right, of thing, right. you know? Uh, so you're <laughs> yeah. really talking about, you're talking about issues that are, 
tough to talk about other ways, but once you put them under the under the heading of humor, that it seems like uh, no holds barred. You can say virtually anything and address virtually anything, and and that's a positive thing in a lot. Yeah, of ways. I think yeah. so. I, I, and um, the the idea that it takes courage um, to do these kinds of things. Yeah, and um, I have to admit, I mean, he said this too that. Uh, sorry, when he looks at our our culture and our society, we don't have a lot of courage. We're not we're sort of going along with things uh, to a certain extent. Now he said it more eloquently than that, but the but the idea that uh, to be truly free and to be free to say those things that have that edge to them, like you're talking about. Um, takes a certain amount of courage going against the grain, and then there are consequences for that as it goes. Yeah, well, one, one of the things uh, that both uh, Joe Rogan and Dr. West were talking about, I think, w- went to this notion of freedom. And uh, uh, when we are truly free, sometimes it's it's scary, or maybe always it's scary, because suddenly if you are free, then there is no one – to blame for what happens next. Uh, you know, we we tend to, a lot of times as human beings, I think, uh, maybe, maybe look for reasons why things don't go as well as we may have originally right. planned them. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a, you know, if you're in a situation where the accountability rests with with you yourself, which ultimately it does yes. in, in most cases. If you if you're in that situation, then uh, the I guess I guess the burden you carry in that is that if things aren't going the way you plan, then do you recalibrate or B do you uh, adjust, do you adapt, and that kind of thing. Right. At, at the same time, I think there was a a, a discussion that. Uh, that maybe there's a lack of courage that that mm-hmm. the, that in the species I think is the way right. I, I think I, Dr. That's, West that's, said yeah, it a lack of courage that. in the species and I think I think to some extent uh, you can see why that that would be true I mean uh, oftentimes the courageous are the ones who stick their necks out go and against the grain go in against some ways. the grain yes, that's right but there are several things can happen it, it's it's almost a, a here's a I, I guess a good business uh, analogy okay let's say uh, you're courageous and so you go out and you borrow um, a lot of capital okay. to establish a business yeah and then the business doesn't go well, and you Oops. end up bankrupt, Oops. and you lose your home, that kind of thing. Well, well, I'll, I, I think in a lot of cases, folks would rather not take that risk because in, it's easier to go to work for someone, which is what I did most of my life, go to work mm-hmm. for someone. Then you have someone, you have rules, you have boundaries, you have these things, and the the expectation on your part is that if you – if you follow these rules, stay within these boundaries, you have you have superiors who you listen to. If you if you follow right. all that, then you're going to be okay. And right. in fact, I mean that, that, that's almost the promise of that, and that, that's a tradition uh, that has kind of passed on, and we bought into it to a certain extent. Well, I was going to say it's it's a it's a total mindset, and it's uh, there's absolutely no reality to it i mean it it's real in the sense that as long as things are going good for for whomever you work for uh that that maybe things will go well but just a few things go differently in an organization or in a in an economy and suddenly you're just as out to the woods right. as you would be if, if you were a a business person and you were reporting to yourself and, right uh, and there, there's that structure and i think he used that word as well yeah. too that that sometimes we sort of rely upon that structure to get us through but if the person truly uh becomes free and says what going against the grain as we just mentioned yeah. that it's going against that structure as well so yeah. even the ideologies behind those structures it can it's going to take that great person to make that difference for people i think yeah and the payoffs are great i mean 
first that that uh, you're you're being creative, you're working with others to create things, and uh, and that uh, yeah, you you may be taking a risk, but how risky is it? Because any decision is risk. No decision carries risk. So right. and, and, and that it is a decision. The decision it, not to do something is a decision. That's right. So so I, I think yeah, getting back to where comedy, uh, what the relationship is, and and. I, I didn't see the whole podcast and right. and uh, don't know where these guys went with this, but but the whole idea is uh, comedy is sort of a hedge against absurdity anyway. I mean, right. here's here's the truth about life, and we don't like to think about it, but we think about it often in common. You're born, you live, things happen that are great, things happen that aren't so great, and then you die. That's and that is that whole existential absurdity. Ooh, is sorry, so, you reminded yeah, me. Yeah. So what? Okay, it, what it. is the meaning of all that? <laughs> well, it, it's it's really hard to hard to get your arms around. Uh, the two ways I think humankind has found is uh, certainly one. Well, maybe three. Philosophy is one way, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and there are all kinds of different ways to approach it. And then there's religion, and then and there's humor, and those are well, the three things certainly that. Uh, Maybe in my own personal life have sure. given me a lot of uh, a lot of comfort, right. even though I'm aware of what the truth of the human condition ultimately is. So, right, uh, the, and uh, and I think that's what he said about structures that it brings that um, the difficult, um, hard to um, to really um, make sense of, but also the just the tragedies that are involved in. Our life, as you just put a moment ago, yeah. as we as we develop, but then these structures do that same thing too. That there's just it's ways of sort of coping with the the, the problems that we all face. Yeah, tragedies and triumphs. Uh, I, I think of. Uh, Baseball pitchers. I watch a lot of baseball, right, and uh, I, I, I like baseball. And I know you are a catcher, so you're. you're this is more your thing. <laughs> Short than mine. lived, by the way. Yeah. Left field seemed to be the better spot for me. I think that's so, what uh, that's what they said anyway. So, successful athletes, pitchers are are among those are are those often who can maintain focus on one thing despite. All the things that happen. In other words, if a pitcher had a no hitter uh, last game, well, this game, that no hitter really doesn't matter because this game is this game. Right. And if you don't have your best stuff, you don't have your slider, you don't have your curve, or whatever, whatever it is you rely on, or your controls off, and we all have bad days, you're going to watch the ball go over the left field fence, right? That, that, and, that. and then if that happens, then you have a choice to make. And I've watched pitchers play it both ways. Right. I've watched some pitchers who the ball goes over the left field fence. They hear that, hear it. They don't even watch it. Right. And then they get the ball and they go back. They look at the next hitter. Or they, that's right. That's and where they go. there are some who absolutely, that's it. If it's the first it's inning, like, oh, here game's we go. Over. You see it hanging so, their head and they're. The manager's walking out onto the field. But isn't that a beautiful analogy for life? I mean, you, yeah. you have triumph, you have tra- uh, tragedy, and um, maybe both of them are ultimately pretenders. But what, you, what you're left with is life. And it, that's sort of absurd when you think about it. So I think human beings are always look, looking for really setting up a, a boundary of meaning. And I, I think it's... Real hard to make that happen. I, I think, um, and yeah, it was interesting. He was talking about the arts and music and how stories develop from. Uh, I think he's talking about some of those guttural sounds and the we the from the. It looked like that was a very historical reference where it, those kind of moans and groans came in to being becoming songs, and mm-hmm. then as in songs and music, and then that was not necessarily the dialectic. Uh, as it became um, stories that were passed down. Yeah. So these kinds of, of ways to manage all of that conflict, uh, chaos, if you will, seem to be important for our own human development. Yeah, and there's the emotional aspect, too. So, you know, when you're thinking about stories and songs and uh, uh, 
anything that goes with performance, ultimately, yeah, there's an intellectual component. And we, we often talk a lot about the intellectual component. And if you, if you can get at the meaning and see what meaning this has, I, I remember I had a, a professor who said, how, how does the poem mean to you when he, when we would read wow. poetry? And I think okay. that's a great question because what does the poem mean? Well, that's an intellectual yeah, exercise. Yeah, kind of the content, too, by it, the way. It's, how does it mean? I never know what knew what he was going for, but I love the question because it made me think, okay, how 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 is that poem different from reading prose? How is it different from listening to a song? That kind of thing. And maybe what he was going for was that combination of the intellectual and emotional that's very hard to get at. Any other way than we're we're off on a tangent now, but through art, that kind of thing. Right. I think that's why being an artist always appealed to me. And it's uh, talk about a tragedy. It's a crying shame that I spent my most of my career in some kind of administrative role and uh, being so <laughs> well, busy that I didn't pursue any of the maybe other things. Still I like time. Doing. Maybe you can kind of come back to some of that as the artist. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I, I was curious too, and he said something in the air about the uh, democracy. Democracy, why democracy is so fragile. Yeah. So if I understood it, prior to that, he, he was talking about these structures of oppression and these these um, sort of the, the, the way we structured some of our society. And, and um, I guess I'm looking for the, you know, the difference between the haves and the have nots to a certain extent, but, but how society sort of divided us in that way and that these structures sometimes are a threat to democracy because democracy is about laughing with others as opposed to laughing at people. Right. So um, fragile democracy, what do you think he was saying in there? What's your take on that? Uh, democracy, my view of it is it depends on goodwill. In other words, to be engaged in a – in let's – Let's think of it as a team. It's a team approach. You and I are involved in this endeavor. We're making podcasts. We're doing various things. For this yes, to happen, are. there has to be a, a, a lot of trust, and, and I have to ultimately be about good happening for you. Okay. I mean, I want it to That's happen nice. for me, but it, but in any kind Same of here. in any Go kind ahead. of team endeavor, doesn't it have to be a win for everybody? In that the old seventies uh, win win theory, you know? Yeah, I think so. And that the idea that he he was talking about laughing at someone or laughing down at someone, and, right? Um, quoted uh, in there, but the the notion of laughing with somebody uh, together seems like a really uh, way to be compatible and and work together and uh, kind of bond in some ways too. So I think that would seem to be a really important message. And the idea of laughing at someone mm -hmm. doesn't sound all that great. Well, laughing with goes toward what's commonality with right. us. What? Wh how are we all human together? And uh, laughing at goes toward. Uh, I'm. I think. Uh, Cornell West would say to there's a superior role and, a, and an inferior role and that yes, uh, whoever's doing that the laughing better, better is, said, is yes. styling themselves the superior. But, you know, you, you yeah, talk about that, that's a very interesting way to put that, because I think that's that's kind of separate. That keeps the, yeah. the two separate in that way. You, you know, you mentioned the idea of democracies being fragile. Well, uh, any kind of go government is ultimately fragile that too. True, when you yeah. think about the uh, the uh, whole idea of um, a dictatorial kind of uh, uh, government or a, mm -hmm. um, a monarchy where the monarch is absolute, well, those things only go so so far until the people decide the monarch doesn't have the power anymore and. And a lot of times we forget that, that the people ultimately have the say and have throughout history. I, I read, uh, uh, I guess it was Plutarch's Lives, and, I, and, and uh, it's funny how I got to read it. I was reading it because uh, uh, Joseph, my son, had to read it for in his uh, philosophy course or government course. I can't remember which. So he's I reading. I think I read the uh, Cherry Orchard uh, checkoff uh, because uh, my son Colin was in there and reading, right. and I wanted to find out what that what was that about. Well, the, the, there it was. The book was sitting there, so I picked it up and I started reading it, and that uh, I, I was. Uh, 
but what I was struck by was actually uh, how Roman government worked. And uh, there was a time, and this was for centuries, where where a a uh, an emperor would become established, and through various methods. I mean, all kinds sure. of uh, yeah. uh, sort of uh, somebody's head got cut off or something, but maybe I don't but, know. But typically, they had the support of the army, right? And they go in, and often the uh, rule of an emperor lasted just so long as his subordinate officers who had originally enticed him to become emperor right as long as their support lasted and uh that that was a job that didn't have much of a retirement plan i will tell you (laughs) because the retirement plan was when the uh subordinate uh, officers and their troops came in and and took the emperor out and and so I think about I, I think about that is you know that short lived too uh, ultimately democracy we love at least in the United States we we give it tons of lip service because democracy is about me but it's about you too I mean ideally but for it to work the the human condition is such that you're going to have certain points of view and I'm going to have certain points of view and a lot of them may be diametrically opposed, but we, we ultimately still have to have goodwill toward each other. In other words, you, you can't be the evil empire because you uh, think differently about something. It's somewhere we have to find that common direction. And that's what makes right. democracy hard, I think. And, yeah. And then and, maybe uh, fragile, as he mentioned, too. We have to work for it right. and keep it going in so many ways. That's right. Yeah. Well, I was um, uh, this, this and, and I know I sprung this on you today. Uh, first off, but you've done you've done well, my friend, and I appreciate that. But it's just a short clip that has so much meaning to it. I wanted to share that with you and for us to talk a little bit about it, because um, some of this. Um, happens on a podcast in these conversations and his conversations long term uh, long form uh, maybe three hours I have to go back and look and see how long this was at least two hours on that podcast you say some profound things and then you move on to the next topic and yeah. I just like okay wait I have to uh, put, put a marker there uh, to go back and, and make sure that um, I need to explore that just a little bit more it's sort of like I don't know if you're reading a book, maybe going back and reading that chapter again right, and kind of right. absorbing it because it has meaning for you. Yeah. So I do appreciate that uh, you're stopping by and talking about this uh, clip today. Well, I I, I uh, certainly could relate, and I I think I said Marvin Kaye, but but actually it was Curtis Mayfield. Curtis, Curtis Mayfield, Mayfield listen to Curtis Mayfield while you're drinking cognac and reading uh, some of the classic literature. I thought that, that was just uh, yes, that's yeah, that, a, that really that really appealed to me. That's, and, uh, that's going to separate you from the guy down at the gas station. That's uh, right. Maybe, that's so, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Curtis Mayfield, great guitar player, anyway. So yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Well, he goes on to talk a little bit more. About jazz, so I encourage you to listen to more the rest of that uh, that interview. That Tom, thanks for uh, coming by today. Enjoyed it, Mike. Thank you so much. Thank you.